Usually in astrophotography, we talk a lot about cold astronomy cameras. Cold astronomy cameras are a great option for astrophotography because we can cool the sensor down and get a much cleaner and less noisy result. But how well does an uncooled planetary camera work, such as the ZWO ASI 183MC? Hi everyone, my name is Noah and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing my experiences with my ZWO ASI 183MC planetary camera. So the reason why cooled astronomy cameras are great for astrophotography is because we can cool the sensor on the camera chip. And this is good because we can reduce the noise in a single sub-exposure and get a cleaner result when we stack the final image. With something like a planetary camera, we cannot control the temperature of the sensor. The temperature of the sensor is basically what the temperature of the ambient air is. So we're going to get more noise with a higher temperature with the planetary camera. So how big of an issue is noise with my planetary camera? Well, I've used this camera for over a year now in both the summer and the winter, so in hot conditions and cold conditions. And the pictures I've been able to take with this camera have been pretty good. However, there is some significant noise with my planetary camera. For example, this is a stretched image of the Rosette Nebula I took in the winter of 2021. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of noise, even at a cold temperature. So if you're wanting to achieve really amazing results with a planetary camera, you're really going to have to push the data past the point where it starts getting really noisy to get a final image. So if you really want to look for a deep sky astrophotography, I recommend going with a cold camera. So how well does an uncooled planetary camera work with uh, light pollution filters? Well, I have used my ZWO ASI 183MC with both the Optolung L-Pro and L-Extreme filter. And for my experiences, uncooled planetary cameras work much better with a broadband filter, such as the Optolung L-Pro. With my Optolung L-Pro filter, I can get much more detail because there's less noise because the filter itself is letting through more light. But with something like my L-Extreme filter, it's only letting in a very little amount of light, so noise is just going to take over the image. And I wouldn't recommend using the Optolink L Extreme with an uncoiled planetary camera. Now, what are some of the advantages and disadvantages with using a planetary camera for deep sky astrophotography? Well, just like with everything in astrophotography, there are always pros and cons to everything. And I'm going to share with you some of my likes and dislikes with using a planetary camera for astrophotography. So some of the pros about a planetary camera that I really love is that they are really great for planetary and solar and lunar imaging. These planetary cameras are great for capturing high frame rate and you can really zoom in on the planets. And these are a great option for planetary photography with a Newtonian telescope or maybe lunar photography. Another pro with these planetary cameras is that if you're already having a planetary camera that you use for planetary and lunar photography, you can also use this planetary camera for some deep sky astrophotography as well. You don't need two different cameras, a planetary and an astro camera, although having two different types is always a great idea. Okay, now time for some of the cons I don't like about planetary cameras. First, these planetary cameras typically have a small sensor size typically around micro four thirds or less. And because of this, you're really going to be cropping in your view, especially if you're going to be doing deep sky astrophotography. This is pretty much essential because most deep sky objects are fairly big and cover multiple spans of the moon. So if you want to take this camera and shoot, for example, the Andromeda galaxy, you're looking at around a 250 millimeter focal length range if you want to capture it all. Another disadvantage of these planetary cameras is that there is no screen or way to control it on the actual camera itself. The only way you can control this is if you plug it into your computer with software. And if you don't have a computer or if it's slow, then I don't recommend using this camera. I recommend using a DSLR for astrophotography. DSLR is a great option for deep sky astrophotography, but not the best for lunar and planetary. 
So if you're really looking for planetary, I recommend going with a planetary camera. So who's the best fit for a planetary camera such as the ZW ASI 123MC? Well, if you're looking to get into deep sky astrophotography, I wouldn't recommend going with a planetary camera. A planetary camera is a great camera, but a DSLR is a great way to go, especially for deep sky astrophotography with nebulae and galaxies. A DSLR is much more easy to use than a planetary camera because on a planetary camera, you have to hook this up to a computer just to take some pictures. But with a DSLR, it's all on the back of the camera. A DSLR is also a great option to start with astrophotography because on a DSLR, you can change the lenses and you have a much bigger sensor size to deal with than with a planetary camera, which typically have very small sensor sizes. However, if you're a more experienced astrophotographer or are looking to get into some planetary slash lunar photography, then I would recommend going with a planetary camera. These planetary cameras are really great for planetary and solar and lunar imaging. And even though they're not the, quite the best at deep sky astrophotography, these are still a great option if you want an all-rounder. Thank you all for watching till the end of the video, and I hope you found this video useful. Please don't take my advice as purchasing advice. I was just giving my opinion on using planetary cameras for deep sky astrophotography and ultimately your decision will come up to you. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you found it somewhat useful. If you did, please consider subscribing. It would really help out with the channel. And until next time, clear skies.